Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. I want to look at paper six. This will be a different kind of video to the paper two and paper four because basically it's very hard to predict what topic they're going to use. Um, from the paper two and paper four, if I was to choose anything for paper six, I would go with some kind of volume or surface area kind of investigation. But that's obviously a bit pie in the sky. I want to have a look today at a paper six from last year and the strategies to try and maximize your marks out of it. Now remember it's an hour and 30 minutes but you've got 40 marks to get and sometimes the one mark will take a little bit of working to get. So let's get straight in and see what I'm talking about. So this comes from June 2018. Now there are two different parts of the paper. The first part is an investigation and the key thing to remember is that it leads you through how to go about doing the question. So for example this one was the largest products and it's all about reading the question so you know what's going on. Okay and if it's a case of highlighting key information then by all means do that as well. The one thing to remember, it gets progressively harder through the question. So you're looking to try and get the first couple of pages correct. Um, if you take here, for example, you want to make sure you're getting these values correct, making sure you get the first couple of pages with the tables so that you've got a good basis then for a C and better, of course, as well. Um, I want to look at the modeling question at the end. Um, the key thing to remember, this may require the use of a GDC, a graphical display calculator. So make sure you bring it to the paper six. Uh, it's very, very important in case you actually have to plot or sketch some kind of weird function, trigonometric or otherwise. Uh, this particular investigation doesn't have much of that, but you never know what's going to come up with the modeling question. Okay, so make sure you read the instructions carefully. So they don't require much mathematical pre-knowledge, but you do need to be able to read what's going on and then apply it. So for this question here, um, P10 equals 4. So the function P tells you the number of prime numbers less than in this case 10, because 2, 3, 5 and 7 are prime and there are 4 primes below 10. That's what the question there is telling you to do. So for this question, question 5, is telling you then that you need to show there are 8 primes less than 20. So you literally need to list all the primes. So 2, 3, 5 and 7, then 11, 13, 17 and 19. Okay, now one thing to be aware of is you don't just get marks for the actual right answer, but also your communication. And there's a maximum of four marks out of 40 for communication. Now, how do you get these marks? Well, let's look at the mark scheme, like so. So with this question, there are no communication marks. Okay, you see here it says no C opportunity. Whereas for the below question, which is 15, there is a communication opportunity. So there's an opportunity to build up your, um, your center of communi good communication throughout the paper. Um, let's go back. So with this question, the P40 is 12, find P50. So you're already told that 12 primes are less than 40. So you just need to find the extra primes between 40 and 50 to then work out what this is. Well, 41, is prime, 43 is prime, 47 is prime. So the answer to that will be then 15 because you're adding on an extra three primes. Now, how do you communicate this? Well, if we go to the bottom of the mark scheme, it will give you the options of where you can get these communication marks. For this question, you just have to write down the numbers 41, 43, and 47. Often you just need to show you're working like you would normally and you'll pick up those communication marks. Uh, for example, 97, well that comes from, if we go back to the actual paper itself. Okay, well you just need to find the difference between P90 and P100 and the only difference is that there's this 97 
prime number there as well. So 93 and 91 not being prime. So it's just highlighting what you're doing as you're going through it. Now, one of the odd things with the Cambridge paper is that if they see five of these communication features, they give you two marks. If they see three of these, then they only give you one mark for communication. Now, as you go through the question, it gets harder and harder, so you're less likely to get those communication marks. Therefore, you want to try and get as many communication marks at the start of the investigation question and the modeling question. So if you can get one, two, three communication opportunities, you've got one mark extra already before even attempting harder questions. Another key point about the paper, if you look at the mark scheme, most questions are either one mark, which is kind of obvious because it's just filling in gaps or writing a number sometimes, whereas there are two mark questions for maybe a little bit of working and then the answer correctly labelled. Okay, Very rare do they give you more than two marks for any part of a question. If we look through this paper, as you can see, mostly one and two marks. If you go to the investigation beforehand, you can see there are hardly any any questions with two marks or three marks and often most of them are just one mark questions but the thing is with this paper the next question builds to the next one so you do need to try and get every single mark as you're going along okay and they do try and make it as straightforward as possible so you can build up towards the correct answers okay so just be aware the marks uh, the grey boundaries as well generally not too high on investigation papers because they are a bit more difficult sometimes to work out um uh, what is, i think there's one more point i wanted to make yeah just make sure you show you're working um they often are okay if you don't round things correctly as well that happens um if I go a bit further, you'll see the answer was 77, but if you put 76, they condone it. So they're looking for the right thinking. They're not necessarily looking for exactly the right rounded number, etc. And there are also follow through marks. So say you got question nine AI and AI two uh, incorrect. Then if you, as long as you use the correct process to then go and do nine B, then they'll give you follow through marks. So if you think you're not quite getting the right answer or the right number, there's always a good opportunity to pick up method marks as we go along. So they do try and mark positively. And in fact, in the mark scheme, if you actually go to the mark scheme, you see marks must be awarded positively. They do want to try and give you as many marks as possible. So make sure you give them a good reason to give you marks. Put down lots of working. Try and attempt every question and make sure you're working right up until the end of the one hour and 30 minute paper. Okay, so just to repeat, um, I think there'll be some kind of volume surface area, either investigation or modeling. Usually it's to do with either nth terms or sequences or patterns or some kind of number pattern as well. That's generally what comes up, but okay, they could change it around a little bit this year as well. Okay, so remember, you've already done 80% of your IGCSE 0607 paper. This is the last step. The key thing is to make sure you get eight hours of sleep, drinking lots of water, eating properly, and then you'll be absolutely fine for the paper six. I will go through a post-mortem of the paper two and paper four, just to see where my predictions were, maybe where I wasn't entirely sure what kind of question would pop up, but I was very happy with the paper four prediction. I said about 90% of the questions I predicted correctly. So I'm very happy with that. Okay, hopefully you found that video useful and bye bye for now.